So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn to Matthew 13. Matthew 13. You know, the kingdom of God is really what Jesus taught. As a matter of fact, and I'll make a bold statement, Jesus didn't teach anything except the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of people think, well, he taught on healing, and he taught on prosperity, he taught on forgiveness, and he taught on... See, but it's all kingdom. It's all kingdom. Everything Jesus taught was kingdom. Everything Paul taught was kingdom. Now, Paul didn't just, you know, step into this uh, immediately. It took him a while. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that he went off to the edge of the desert there, and he was there uh, like around 14 years or something, and the Holy Spirit was ministering to him, and, and he was uh, the only man alive that knew the most about the old covenant and the things of God. It says that he learned more than all of his teachers. I mean, how would you like to come to the place that nobody could teach you anymore because you knew more than all the teachers? Now, there, there's a lot of kids that think they're in that place. <laughs> right? But here's the thing. There's always room for growth. There's always room for maturity. One of the Christians' biggest problems is they become accustomed to what they believe and what they know. And what they know and what they believe and, and what they uh, um, enforced into their life as a habitual lifestyle with God, with church, right, becomes their biggest enemy. Because the Holy Spirit can't get in to teach you anything because you already concluded you know it. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. And verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them, the people, in parables, stories? And it's something that the big buzz thing going around in churches now is that uh, is storytelling. Right. right? And they said, well, Jesus told stories. Jesus didn't tell stories. Jesus told parables. Right. And there is a difference. Yes. Right. There's a difference. Amen. So it isn't just about a about a story. I could get up here and tell you a great story and say, well, we had a good time. All right. You know, dismiss. And you go, well, that was interesting. I didn't know that about pastor. But what did I teach you about God's kingdom? What did I teach you about who you are in Christ? What did I teach you about you receiving the finished work of Christ? <clears throat> right? All right, watch this. He said, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. Now, we'll just open here just real quick. What is an obvious thing that Jesus said? Huh? What's an obvious thing that Jesus said about parables? <clears throat> Think, okay? And I'm going I'm to go off on this just a little bit, <clears throat> but I want you to see what it is. See, we assume... We take for granted. We think that Jesus taught parables, so therefore we will too. But is that what he said? Who is he speaking parables to? To who? Who? The crowd. The crowd. Who is asking him questions? The disciples. And what question did they ask him? Why do you teach parables? Why do you tell these people stories? And what was his answer? Huh? Now, to the disciples, he said what? It is given you to understand and know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. You got it. You got it. But to 
them, who's that? The crowd. He says, I teach parables because they don't have a clue. Come on. So we see this thing, this wind of doctrine that blows through the, through the churches. It's like, oh, let's all be storytellers. And, you know, so what are we saying? We're saying, we don't understand the kingdom. We don't know anything about it. Okay, so we identify ourselves with the crowd that are blinded. Come on. And Jesus said, it is given, past tense, it is given to you. So do you have it, if it was given? All right, what do you have? Understanding in the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Right. But then Jesus is making a statement here to their heart. See, they're out there. They're the disciples. <laughs> Duh. Why are you telling stories? Well, because they don't understand. But it is given to you to understand. What do we understand? <laughs> the mysteries of the kingdom of God. We do? Come on. Now, see, that's what you're saying now. We do? <clears throat> right? Because that's what I said. I do? When the Lord says, you already have it. I do? He says, I said you did. Well, yeah, but I don't think I do. He says, do I tell the truth? Yeah, of course. He says, you have it. Okay. Okay. What I'm not seeing is the separation, the difference between spirit, soul, and body. Right? I am a spirit born of God. That's my true identity, the hidden man of the heart. That is me. Why? Because old things are passed away. Right? And so... The, 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 the soul that I had or the spirit that I had that was the human spirit that evolved and came down through time from Adam, which was separated from God because of Adam's transgression, right? So the sin that needed to be forgiven was not all of the sins of the flesh, you know, the adultery, fornication, and drugs, and lying and stealing, and cheating, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Jesus came, suffered and died, spilled his blood, picked up his body, went into heaven, and broke the power of the sin of Adam. Because that is what locked the human spirits, the human souls, the human race out of God's realm, right? It was what? A barrier that was put up. And that barrier was called <coughs> death, right? So that's what death means, separation. No one could get to God. So God made covenant with mankind. He made a covenant with, with, with Moses. He made a covenant with, with uh, Noah. He made a covenant with Abraham. Abraham was, was the, the main covenant that was made, but there are several covenants in the Old, Old Testament, right? And this enabled, because of God's faith and because of the grace of God and because he found a man that would believe him and exercise his faith, in what God was providing, right? And that was Abraham. And Abraham actually came to the place, and you, you read it, it, it took a while, but he eventually came to the place that, that, that his eyes of his understanding were enlightened, and he began to see that there's no limit to faith and no limit to grace and no limit to the desires of God to connect with his people, right? With the human race, and so by the faith of Abraham, and, and you see it in, in Hebrews 11, it says that by faith, Abraham stopped being 
a citizen of heaven, I mean of earth, and started being a citizen of heaven. He became a citizen of a city whose builder and maker was God, right? Now, now I, I know the brain goes, woo, you know, whatever. But what I'm, I'm showing you is that, that faith in a finished work of God has no limitations. You limit it not by your faith because your faith is perfect. Your faith is a gift from God. It's limited because of the natural soulish part of our life that is still hooked into natural things. That's where we develop limitations in our life, right? Because our heart, which is the subconscious, will only allow us to be elevated to a certain level, right? And that's the reason you have some people that think that they can do anything or, or, or you know, believe God for whatever, and it happens, you know? I, I love the example, just real quick, um, about the little girl, four years old, that was watching the Olympics, and this lady won the gold medal. And she got up on the stand, and, and they, they had the flag, and they played the, the national anthem, and, and this guy came up and put a gold medal on her, her, her neck, and, and uh, she said, Money, what, what is that? She says, oh, she won the gold medal, you know? And four years old, she looked, she pointed at the TV and says, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Okay? What did she know? Huh? Did she know how to ski? I don't think she lived around snow. <laughs> right? She didn't know anything. But something in here said, I'm going to do that. That's the power that's placed in the subconscious part of mankind, right? Now, it's limited if you're not born again. It has certain limitations. Some of those limitations really are your DNA and how you're raised and, 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 and your ability. Listen, if, if you're, you know, um, never mind. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, uh, as time grew, she, she wouldn't, leave her folks alone until they got her some skis. She had some lessons, right? And she, she started getting up early in the morning. She went through everything she, she needed to do, you know, in training, in practicing, being on the snows, hundreds of hours exercising, you know, doing all the things, right? And about, oh, 16 years later, 15, 16, something like that, she was standing on the middle podium and they were placing a gold medal around her neck. And she raised her hands and just said, you know, and her, I don't remember whether she gave glory to God, but her, her testimony was, my journey started when I was four years old. It's just something that happened. Listen, when something happens inside here, when it clicks, Man, it's all over. You know, if it can click on the inside of you to become wealthy or to have more financial stability than you've ever had in your life, when it clicks. Now, that's different than, than having an idea and going after this or that, right? It's something that clicks. And then your whole life, your whole world around you starts being attracted to that thing that clicked on the inside of you. And it begins to take place and it begins to manifest. This is what Jesus is teaching in the kingdom of God. He said, when you realize, when it goes off on the inside of you, that you are in the kingdom of God, that you're not of this world, but you're in God's kingdom. He says, there won't be anything that will not be available to you and all things will be attracted to you. Now, I'm not talking about some strange thing, you know, like the universe will create it. The universe hadn't created anything ever. As a matter of fact, the universe was created by Jesus Christ, the Word of God. <clears throat> Amen. So I'm not talking about some philosophical uh, New Age type idea, whatever. But, but hold your horses. People that are in that type thinking 
are excelling because they have convinced their heart that these things will happen. They will work. And to a degree, they will. And this is what Jesus is talking about, right? Coming right back. He said, I'm teaching parables so the normal average person won't catch hold of the mysteries of the kingdom of God, right? Because if they do, they will use them. My kids don't, right? And Jesus later said, what? Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, right? And there's other teachings talking about, you know, the people of this world excelling. You know, why, why is it, you know, you can, you can almost guess and be pretty accurate. Just, just put a list of all the billionaires in America, all the billionaires in America, and just mark them all heathen. And, and, and you'll be fairly accurate. Now, there's a lot of Christian billionaires. There are, right? But you'll still get a passing grade if you just mark, marked them all wicked. Huh? Why are the wicked people the ones that control the wealth of the world? Because they believe they can. And I believe it from here. See, people, the gospel is a heart gospel, not a mind gospel. But all Christians try to understand it with the mind. They try to live it out with their mind, right? And the power source of your life is your heart, all right? Now, look at this. Mystery. Mystery means to close the mouth. It means something which is concealed, hidden, before and unknown, searching into which one must be initiated or instructed before he can understand. A mystery, what it's basically saying is... uh, uh, my, my um, grandparents, at least one of them, was very high up in, in, in uh, uh, the what? Masons. Masons. Thank you. In the Masons. And uh, my mother uh, wanted me to follow my, my grandfather's footsteps. And so I started out in, in uh, Demolay, right? And uh, what is it, Job's daughters? What are they? Is that what it is? Uh, for the girls. And so I started going to these classes. And it was, it was real weird. And you go in there and there's this, this big room and, and they'd have uh, the lights down. And, and you started learning these um, secret handshakes. And you had to learn these, these secret um, sayings. And they'd give you a little card. And all, all it was was the first letter of each word. You know, and you had to go over and memorize these things. And so when you get there, you come and you greet with your little secret thing and, and you, 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 you know, you say all this stuff. And, and, uh, and just something inside of me was just, just saying, I don't, I don't want to be here, you know. But I want mama for mama, right? You do anything for mama, right? And inside me, you know, I, I, I just, um, it was repulsive in, in a sense, so we come up to the place that we were going to uh, graduate in the, ne- the next level. And, and um, there's, a, there's a lot of strange things that are in there. And so uh, my dad went with me to this graduation thing. And so we're sitting there and uh, we're going through all the things and stuff like that. <clears throat> and uh, after it was over and I, I looked at dad and I said, dad, what do you think about this? He said, I think it's a bunch of junk. I said, do I have to come back? He said, no. I said, oh, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. And, and so I didn't. Okay. Uh, I'm not coming against the, the people there or whatever. I'm just saying there is, there is things. There's, there's, uh, there's groups, right? There's things that you have to go through certain um, events. You have to prove yourself. You have to uh, qualify, right? to become 
part, and, and you're the only ones that know it. Right. So it's it, so that's the type that means secret or mystery. It doesn't mean that uh, you get a, a treasure map and and only one person knows where it is. And that's the person that buried it. And you got to try to figure it out. And this riddles and all this stuff and, you know, go and find it. See, that would be a mystery that is unknown. It's just something you're trying to to find out. Right. But the mystery here means it is known. It is well known. It is openly known. But it's only known to those that qualify. Right? And so in the kingdom of God, there are mysteries. It isn't something for us to try to dig out and and, and go look or something. Why? Because Jesus said what? We already know. Right? So it's already in here, in the hidden man of the heart. We already know it, but we need to draw it up into our understanding. And he gave us ways of doing that, right? Praying in tongues is one way to edify yourself and draw up the mysteries out of your spirit man, you know, into the natural, the understanding. Worshiping God with a heart rended before God, not just singing songs, but when the heart is rended and that, that, that uh, appreciation that is overwhelming and the goodness of God and everything. And that's one that breaks it loose and, 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 and brings it up. The other is meditating the Word of God, going over it. It's not memorization. It's, it's not a, a daily devotional. It's when you take a certain uh, a portion of Scripture, you, you find out where that subject starts and you find out where it ends and then you read it over and over. It could be 50, 100 times times, 200 times, 500 times. It doesn't matter. You just read it over and over and over and over. And out of it, it begins to draw it up. And the understanding of the mystery of the kingdom of God begins to uh, be apparent, you know, in your thinking, right? So most people try to understand the Bible with their mind. They can memorize, they, they, they can, they can um, know more than, than anybody else, but they don't know what it means, Right. And they don't know how to how to operate in it and walk in it. Right. Like healing. See, healing. You can know everything there is about healing. You can quote every verse in the Bible about healing and yet not be healed. Come on. Is it a right? Yes, it's a right. It's a done deal. It's already over. It's a, see, but the, the heart hasn't unfolded the mystery of what happened to Jesus on the cross. What happened to Jesus when he bore his back to the, the smiter's whip? What happened to Jesus when he went into the belly of the earth, you know, and crushed the devil and took the, the keys of death, hell, and the grave? What happened to Jesus when he ascended back up and then he spent like 40 days, you know, talking to people, inviting them to the, to the upper room, to the Holy Spirit, and then the ascension when he went in and he offered his blood and he sat down on the throne of righteousness, right? And the whole thing, and he brought us into a place of righteousness where we are separated from this world, right? There's all kinds of spiritual things and dynamics that took place, and that's called the kingdom, right? And it it isn't a a religion. It it isn't uh, morality. It isn't how good you are or, 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 or how bad you are or whether you do everything perfect or whether you don't. That isn't the, the point. The point is from a heart level, do you understand the heart of God the Father that went to such an extreme to bring you into a place where you can stand before Him in a face-to-face relationship? Right? He is your Father. We are born of Him. Born from His loins. By the seed of God. That's what Peter says, right? Listen. We need to open ourselves up and say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Teach me these things. See, if I belong in the kingdom, I'm of the kingdom, and you said I already understand and know the mysteries, meaning that they they aren't hid from anybody. They're just poured out, right? But we have to have a heart that is open to accept and to receive. And we have to exercise our faith, calling those things that be not as though they are. We have to generate the hope of the calling. So that faith can initiate that hope and cause it to come to pass. And then we step into the grace of God knowing it is the Holy Spirit that does the work. It's effortless to us. We just give Him a body to use. Right? But out of severe ignorance, 
we start creating our life to be some form of religious uh, acceptance uh, of what God has done, and we mix it up with all kinds of things. See, all of you, how many of you have, have ever sit under the teaching of more than one person? Huh? We're messed up. <laughs> we, we, we've heard a whole lot of, what, opinions along the way. A lot of it was good. Not, not, not saying it's, it's bad or what. Anyway, what I'm saying is things can look good. They can sound good. They can appear good. But what, what good is it? What lasting good? Okay? I, I'm, not, I'm not against any church, any denomination or anything, right? But is it changing your life? Is your finances increasing? Is your health increasing? Is your attitudes changing? Right? Are your opinions changing? Is your friendliness increasing? Is your ability to forgive increasing? I mean, is there change? Can somebody see you and say, whoa, you're different, right? That's what the gospel is all about. Yes. Amen. If the only thing that changes in you is you're more moral and don't do all that dumb stuff anymore, then that's not the power of the gospel. That's you yielding yourself to peer pressure. Right? Come on. So we need to step into a place that we begin to see change. Change. And this is what the, the, the parable of the sower is all about. And Jesus said what? He said, this is the most important parable in the kingdom. And if you don't understand the working, the operation of the parable of the sower, he says, the rest of them will do you no good. You won't understand. And if you go back and you start reading the stories, the parables, all of them deal with the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is likened to a merchant that went into a far land and found a pearl of great price, and went home and sold all that he had, and went and bought and purchased that land so that he could have that, you know. And as the kingdom of God is like, unto, the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like, right? And we all get into these parables, and, and it doesn't dawn on us, the kingdom of God is like. So what is he teaching? He's not teaching about a parable. He's not teaching about about the, the parable of good price. He's not, he's not uh, teaching about tares and, and wheat. And he's teaching the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God that we need to get out of these parables. And he says, if you don't know this one, he said, you'll never know and understand the rest of them. He says, within this parable is the mysteries of, of abundant life, of health, healing, prosperity. It's the understanding that I'm in this world, I'm not of it. It's the understanding of a God that is so over the top in love with me that he left nothing out. It's about an attitude of the Father that refuses to hold anything against me. Because I've been washed in the blood, because I'm made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's about a Savior, Jesus, who so gladly yielded his back to the smiter's whip, knowing that I would get the benefit of healing and health. It's about a Savior that looked down from a cross when he was beaten so brutally that they couldn't even recognize who it was up there and didn't know that it was a human being. He was so distorted, so swollen. And he looked down and said, I did this for you. 
I did this for you. Right? It's about something that is far, far, far greater than missing hell and going to heaven. The kingdom of God is the heart of God. And there are ways that the enemy comes and he uses us against ourselves and against each other to keep us from ever transforming and transfiguring into the, the child that God holds in his heart and determined that we would be before the foundation of the world. Before Adam fell, God already pictured who we are, who we would be, what we would do, what we would accomplish, and what we would have, and what he provided for us. And, and it's all set up and done, right? But ignorance or not knowing is the most deadliest, damnable thing in existence. And we're going to get in to some things about the kingdom of God and about who we are in that kingdom of God. But the first thing, we laid a foundation, but the first thing you've got to grab hold of, you've got to understand, is you already know. You already know. It's already in here. But we need to find out how do you unlock that so that it sifts up from out of your heart, the subconscious, into the conscious mind, and then out into your life to begin to manifest. We see people that manifest a lot of the things of the goodness of God and the finished work of Christ. But it's kind of like buying a lottery ticket. There's a lot of people that win, but most don't. If you knew beyond a shadow of doubt that if you stopped and bought a lottery ticket on your way home today that you would win absolutely, would you buy one? <laughs> Somebody said, I'm, I'm gone now. <clears throat> Wait, come back. <laughs> right? Well, what if you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt what Jesus really provided for you, what God really had intended for you, and that you have within you everything you'll ever need to live an abundant life way beyond your fondest dreams, right? And it's all in here, and all you got to do is learn how to remove what is the distraction, remove what is the hindrance, and the law of life will just create things. Things that you don't even pray about. Things that may not even hit your mind or brain. But the kingdom produces abundance and life and victory. It surrounds you. It goes with you. It goes before you, behind you, above you, around you making sure that everything in the natural world bows to a child of the Most High God. Amen. Just don't get egotistical. Don't get full of pride. Right? It's all because of Jesus. Amen. All of it. All of it. Train yourself to be open, to be gracious, to be a giver. There's far more on its way than what you can give. Once you close that thing, you start <clears throat> building a reservoir. Someone quote me a scripture about reservoirs. Can you quote me a scripture about a river? It says that God has called us to freely drink 
from the rivers of prosperity. The rivers of life. It's a constant flow. It doesn't matter how much goes through you because it'll never stop coming into you. When you open yourself up to realize that God is way more gooder than we realize. Amen? Freely you have received. Freely give. Right? How deadly is ignorance? It's pretty deadly. All right? We'll close with this. Foundation over. Building an edifice. Matthew 13, verse 19. They came to him and said, teach us the things of the, uh, uh, of the parable of the sower. We're disciples. We want to know what it is. Verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, when anyone hears, hears what? Now, he didn't say, when anyone hears the Bible, the word of the kingdom. What is the word of the kingdom? It's the new covenant. It's the heart of God. It's what cost him his only begotten son to put in operation within the human race to those that what? Believe, accept, and receive. Right? Right? When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not. He could say, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and are ignorant. Ignorant doesn't mean lack of intelligence, retarded. It just means I don't know. I don't know. Is it a fault? Is it a sin to not know? No. But if you find out how to learn and not learn, hello, come on. Then cometh the wicked one. When does the wicked one come? (laughs) when does he come what opens the door what allows him to come if you're ignorant you don't know okay anybody here don't know what I'm talking about (laughs) hello have you ever sat under somebody teaching and said I don't understand a thing they're saying. I don't know what they're talking about. What'd you do? Here, Mr. Devil, come in and eat up all this good seed. See, we don't readily give our conscious mind to things we don't know. They're not appealing. Hello? Hello? How many of you like to try new things when you go to restaurants? Your favorite restaurant, but try new things, things you've never had before. How many of you mostly order the same thing? Right? At Marla's. Dale walks in and they just bring him his meal. Not too many places where you can walk in and say, usual. (laughs) Right? And that's how we're built naturally. Right? We want our natural, we want our usual way of thinking. We like to think about certain things and everything, right? So the Holy Spirit is trying to get us over, you know, to open up our heart, open up our mind to something different. And we resist him. We don't resist him consciously. 
but we still resist Him, right? How many of you have ever had symptoms, had sickness, and you opened your Bible and you thought, I need to read some healing scriptures. And after one or two, you thought, maybe I should see what's on Fox News. <laughs> right? Or you got thirsty. Or you got hungry. Or the phone rang. Right? What are, all these things are what? Now more important than my healing. But in my mind, that's God by a strap some heal. Hello? What would you ladies think if your husband comes in and just walks over and starts making a sandwich or something and, and you say, well, how was your day, honey? Ah, usual. Oh. Well, usually, I mean, when you come in, you, 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 you tell me that you love me. Yeah, I, I figured you knew that. <laughs> well, aren't you going to say it? Well, I, I've said it so many times. I mean, <laughs> nothing's changed. Come on. Uh, is, is that the same? Love you, love you too. I love you. Right? I mean, there's a difference. There's something called emotions. When we emotionally wrap our heart around the Word of God, the finished work of Jesus, what He did for us, the love of our Father. When we emotionally wrap around our heart around His, his finished work and, 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 and knowing that He cares for us. Right? See, that's different than... Thank you, Dad. By his straps, I'm healed. Hey, big bro. You were crucified for me, died. I appreciate that. You know, I'm being a little facetious, but isn't there a difference? Yes. Okay. This is what the kingdom is teaching. And a huge percentage of Christians have hardened their hearts and emotions toward the things of God, the finished work of Christ. They still appreciate, but they appreciate it with their mind and their knowledge and their attendance. Well, if I didn't love God, I wouldn't be in church. Yeah, God just, you know, just so thrilled. He jumped up and said, whoa, you're in church again. You know? We're talking about a kingdom. A kingdom. Not a natural life that you gave to God, but a kingdom that you received from God. It isn't how much you can change your life and clean it up and, and try to prove that you really you know, appreciate what Jesus did for you, but it's in the receiving of a given life. Right? So he's not really saying, will you change your life for me? And that's how most people preach it. Right? But it's really saying, will you allow me to live through you? See, so he's not interested in you changing your life. He's interested in you accepting his life that will change yours. Right? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the kingdom. We thank you, Father, that you're not willing to leave us alone. It is not your desire nor your will to see us suffer, be in pain, but you've already provided for us. That by those stripes that Jesus bore and took, you paid the price, the penalty. And we gladly accept and we receive it. Jesus, we ask you to live your life through us. We accept that life. 
we accept that sacrifice. We accept everything that you did for us in our place. That exchanged life. That we're no longer in this world. Hallelujah. Of this world. But we are in it, but not of it. So we're not of the dictates of the flesh, the dictates of the economic system, the dictates of the medical system, the dictates of the political system, the dictates of the educational system. We are not under any dictates of this world. We are citizens and ambassadors of heaven, of the celestial realm, the third heaven, that we live and dwell here on planet Earth, and that we fully receive all that Jesus has done for us right now. I accept it. I receive it. Holy Spirit, I open my heart to you and I ask you, teach me. Teach me. Show me. Show me what it is that I know that I think I don't. Show me how easy it is to walk an abundant life. I accept and I receive it because it's by your grace, not my effort. It's by your grace, not my effort. It's by your grace. And I receive that in Jesus' name.